Hello, welcome to the fourth in a series of short revision videos looking at contested dormant markets. This time we're going to spend a few minutes thinking about the links between contestability and economic efficiency. Uh, focusing essentially on this question, to what extent will a contestable market lead to economically efficient outcomes. Now, when you're doing your analysis for assignments, if you can make some comment on efficiency, that will be terrific to get extra marks. Economic efficiency is all about really about society making optimal use of our scarce factor resources to help satisfy people's changing needs and wants. Now, there's no one single uh, meaning of efficiency. Uh, we're going to focus on allocative, productive and dynamic in this short video, but they all link to how well a market allocates those resources uh, and to see if the outcomes are, are favourable from society's point of view. Here's our diagram from the last video, and I said in that video that there's no unique price and profit equilibrium in a contestable market. You see, due to freedom of entry and exit, in other words, the absence of sunk costs, existing firms always face the threat of new firms, new products entering the market. We call that hit and run entry. Now, the threat of entry may be sufficient to keep prices close to a competitive equilibrium and therefore eliminate monopoly profits or keep them very low. Because if they don't, if existing firms are either being inefficient or charging high, very high prices, then new firms are likely to enter. So in our theory, uh, instead of the monopoly price of P1, we're probably going to get closer if the market is genuinely contestable. We're probably going to get closer to price P2 rather than P1. That, that has implications for efficiency. So to what extent will a contestable market lead to efficiency? Well, I want to make four, four points. Uh, in support of the idea that contestability can actually be quite good for efficiency. It can often bring some of, if not all, the benefits of competitive markets. First of all, a contest is a contest. It's a battle, a battle for market share, a battle for, for sales and, and revenues and ultimately profits. And therefore, we expect to see in a contestable market quite a high level, a high degree of price competition between competing firms. And if that uh, genuine competition day to day leads to lower prices, that should bring price closer to marginal cost and that should lead to improved allocative efficiency. OK, we may not necessarily get to the allocatively efficient output, but we may come fairly close. Another aspect of contestability is that there's a great incentive for firms to cut their costs. You see, if there's an existing firm that's being inefficient, a new firm uh, could potentially take advantage of that and, and enter the market and uh, take away some market share. We call that hit and run entry. So if the market is really competitive day to day, there's quite a strong incentive for businesses to cut their costs and therefore we'll get less X inefficiency, hence improved X efficiency. We often see in these kind of markets a lot of innovative behaviour, new products, product differentiation, uh, process innovation and different business models. So although profits tend to be quite low in this market, meaning there's less funds for research and development, the dynamics of competition can often drive innovation, leading to improved dynamic efficiency. And we can still get economies of scale in a contestable market. There's no set, unique, predetermined number of firms in the market. In a contestable industry, large-scaled firms can and they do exist. Indeed, often in a contestable oligopoly, for example, you have a small cluster of very big firms with scale economies and numerous smaller firms, challenger brands, uh, seeking to, uh, to make a mark. So you can always get the best of both worlds. Enough firms for competition, but uh, the size of firms allows for scale economies and that improves productive efficiency. This is a slightly different diagram. Look away. I've, what I've done here is I've taken away the kind of curvy cost curves and just assumed that there's a constant cost of supply. In other words, the marginal cost and the average cost are the same. I'm not making a distinction between fixed and variable costs. And uh, the supply curve essentially I've drawn here is perfectly elastic, if that makes sense. Now, the monopoly price is shown. And if that was the monopoly price at Q1, the profits would be the shaded yellow area. 
However, in a contestable market, it may well be the case that the price is driven down closer to cost. So that intersection between demand and marginal cost is the allocatively efficient output and price. Now, you could also develop this analysis by showing what happens to consumer surplus in a contestable market. We won't do that in this video. We might do it in a future analysis video. Key point, the greater the threat of entry of new firms, the more likely it is that existing firms will price their goods and services, their products closer to that point we've just identified uh, where price equals marginal cost, the competitive and allocatively efficient outcome. So this could be a situation where contestability does lead to economic efficiency. In the final video, we're going to go through just a handful of interesting multiple choice questions, which will allow you to test your understanding of contestable markets.